finding angle measures involving diagonals of a rhombus. So first we need to know what is a rhombus. Um, so down here in background, again, if you're not writing notes, you should be writing notes. We should be adding to these um, each time we do a topic. We've been focusing on parallelograms now for, I believe, two weeks. Um, so we should definitely have quite a few notes on parallelograms at this point. Um, and a rhombus is a special parallelogram. So a rhombus is a parallelogram with all four sides congruent. So we know it's a parallelogram. All the qualities of parallelogram go with, go with it. Um, op, two pairs of sides are parallel. Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Um, we also know that um, the diagonals bisect each other. Um, and we, um, we know now that because it's a special parallelogram called a rhombus, that all four sides are congruent. So this is special to a rhombi, or rhombus, sorry, rhombi is plural. Um, the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So this is, again, special to a rhombi. So I'm going to put over here, whoop, I'm going to write my notes over here, and hopefully this won't be in the way of, of our problems on the next page. So a rhombus. All right, so four congruent sides. And um, diagonals are perpendicular. So that means if I drew this diagonal here like this, then we'd have a right angle in the middle here. That's what it means, okay? So I'm going to get rid of that just so it's not in the way here. Um, the diagonals of a rhombus also bisect the um, vertex angles. So that's another piece of the, the diagonals. Diagonals bisect, and I'm going to be um, shorten it and say angles. It's the vertex angles, so that means that this diagonal here going across bisects this angle here, and to bisect means it cuts it in half. So if I know that this side is 41, which they're giving me here, then I also know this side is 41 degrees. Um, which is actually the first thing they show us down here. So angle 4 has to be 41 degrees because we know if it's bisected, that means that this each one is half. So angle 2 and angle um, blank here, they didn't give us a, a number for it. These are also cut in half of the entire angle. And remember, it's a parallelogram. Opposite angles are congruent. So if this whole thing over here is 81, or sorry, 82, because 41 plus 41 is 82. This side is also 82. 82 divided by 2 is 41 again. So angle 2 also has to be 41. Sorry, I was writing it on the wrong spot. And then what we want to do is figure out angle 1 and 3. So the main thing is we want to pay attention to is the triangle angle sum theorem here. Um, and we've used this one quite a few times over the last few weeks. All angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if we subtract what we have, which is 41 and 41, because we have 41 here and we have 41 here, that'll tell us what's left over for 1, and that's 98 degrees. Once I have 98 degrees for this one, again, opposite angles are congruent. I can go down here to number 3 and say that it's 98 degrees. So they're using the triangle angle sum theorem twice, but you could also just remember it's a parallelogram. Opposite angles are congruent. And then that's all we're going to do is fill this in. So I'm going to, let's see, whoop, try to just erase this. I was going to leave these couple of special things here, but I want all this other stuff to come over. All right, let's see if I click start. I forgot to click my cursor. Okay, now I'm going to click start. Start. Oh, darn it. It's a little bit in our way there. Um, so, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and clear it because I didn't realize that this part I was hoping would be a little lower, but it's, it's off to the side here. All right, so we need to find angle 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, remember, this is cut. I need to take the pen down, don't I? That's a very large marker. Mark. So, these are cut in half. So if I know 42, 
then I know this also has to be 42. And remember, opposite angles are congruent. So if this whole thing is 42 plus 42, which is 84, then this whole thing is 84. And then I would just divide in half again for each one of these. So this is 42 and this is 42. I don't know why my 42s are looking funny there. All right, so I know angle 3 is 42 degrees. I found that one first. So now I'm going to focus on 4, 2, and 1. So now if I know, um, and I'm just focusing on this one first for whatever reason. So I'm going to ignore, I don't want to focus on the 84s right now. Only the 42 and the 42. Remember triangle angle sum theorem, they all have to add up to 180. Every triangle you've ever seen. So if I'm using 42 and 42 here, then I do have 84 because I add these two together. And remember, these two are pretty much the same as adding these two together. So I'm still using the 84 number. I'm just going to subtract, and I get 116. Remember, that's the whole angle here is 116. I'm going to divide it in half to have these two pieces. So divided by 2, I get, let's see, 5 and 8. So I should get 58 there. So 4 is 58. And then I can do the same thing over here. Remember, opposite angles are congruent. So this whole thing is 116 divided by 2. Each one of these is also 58 degrees. So quite a few of my answers here are going to be 58. Oops, not 5. 58 and 58. All right, check. Uh oh, did I divide wrong? So I get, let's just work it out again. So I have 180 minus 84. So I do get 6. Oh, dang it. I subtracted wrong. That was dorky. This should be 96 divided by 2. And I get 4 and 8. So I should have gotten 48, not 58. That was just a silly mistake there in my dividing. So all of these should be 48s. Or sorry, not dividing, I subtracting. So I wasn't paying attention to my, my um, borrowing there. All right, recheck. There we go. All right, so paying attention to our, our simple math there is definitely important. Uh, all right. So now in this one, we're going to find 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we know 56. And we know if we do the whole angle, we have opposites. But we also know each one's cut in half, and they're equal. So if half is 56, then each one of these is also 56. We already know that because the diagonals are congruent and the diag um, sorry, not diagonals, the um, angles are congruent, and the diagonals bisect those angles. So now what we want to do is find 4 and 3. So let's focus on do, do, do this top one. And we get 180 minus what we're using. Remember, a triangle has to add up to 180 degrees. So we're using 112 because 56 plus 56 is 112. We're going to subtract. Pay attention to my borrowing this time. All right, so we should get 68. So we get 68. Remember, that's the whole angle. So I need to divide by 2, and I get 34. So each one of these halves is going to be 34. So now we just want to click on here and fill this out. So 1 is 56, 2 is 56, 3 is 34, and 4 is 34. All righty. Here we go. All right, one more. Okay, so we want one, two, three. So the easiest ones to fill in here will be two and four because I already know half right here. 38 is half. So that means that, that this also has to be 38. Down here, this would be 38 and 38 because the diagonal cuts these angles in half and then 
they, they're congruent, so they must be cut in half evenly. Um, so now we can look at the angle one. Do, 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 do. I'm just drawing this red triangle not very well. So remember, they always add up to 180 for a triangle. And I want to subtract what I'm using. So I'm using 38 and 38. And we get, let's see, 16, 76. And I'm going to subtract. Get zero. So I get 104. And then remember, 104 um, is the whole angle. But do I need to divide on this one? Nope, because they want the whole angle. Now I can do opposites or congruent. So this one is also 104. So I don't need to divide it up because they're not asking me to. So that is the last step on that one. We just need to fill in what we have. Two was 38. Two was 104. And four was 38. All right, check. Okay, we're all done with that one.